I would now like to call Suleyman Hamad Al Ghafri, learning and development expert on the topic integrated talent talent management model. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Good morning for all. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the GEDEX organizer to invite me to participate in this uh, event in Future Skills and HRD conference. Um, and uh, I am willing to participate and share uh, this uh, subject about the integration of talent management model. Uh, my name is Suleyman Al Ghafri. I, am, I have 14 years experience in learning and development area. So according to my, I am working in private sector. Uh, according to my experience in learning and development and according to my research in integration of talent management model, so I would like to share it uh, with you. So before we start about the integrated of talent management uh, model, let us to refresh ourselves about HR, human resource development. So first of all, thanks uh, for Mr. Abdul Basot. He, he has high level overview about the HR development uh, when he went through uh, the presentation. But I will deep down in one of the important model that we need to focus on. So let us to refresh ourselves about the HR management. HR management is considered one of uh, the main department in any organization. So it's considered the backbone for any institution, I doubt there is a company or any institution, uh, uh, any organization, they don't have HR department. So HR department is very important, consists of many uh, functions or teams, and each department, they have different names, but in concept, they are working with the same task and responsibility. So they have recruitment, uh, they have training team, they have employer relation, uh, benefits and compensation, uh, performance management, and employee relation. Uh, so this, this is the main uh, teams which are uh, under HR department. So do you think there is a need for HR department for any company? So for sure, yes. And there is a benefit for that, and there is impact why we need for HR department. So why we need for HR department? The main purpose of that because there is impacted for the employees. It is impacted for the employees because we need to make sure the employees working in the environment, they are happy, they satisfy about the environment they are working on. And also we need to make sure uh, there is employer retention as well. Uh, we need to make sure there is a department to manage all the process, uh, procedures legally in the department to all the employees, they work safe in, in, the, in the company. And also to achieve the organiz organizational goals as well. So what we need to make sure all the efforts under each team that we have here, either in recruitment, in training, player relation, they work very hard. They have a lot of initiatives a lot of projects, a strategy, they use it to make sure they are the employees happy. They need to make something integration model to make all these process all together. So imagine that you have a wheel. If this wheel is not circulated and there is broken the wheel, it will not go properly. Maybe it will, it will go, but at the end, it will not reach where you would like to reach according to your direction or objective. So you need to have a proper wheel that really is integrated model that can use it for a while. And maybe you replace later, but maybe it will keep with you for a while of time. So for this reason, we need to have integration model strategy, which is about talent management model. So now in the next slide, I will deep down one of the important models that we need in any organization. When we talk about the talent management model, it consists of the three main pillars, three pillars. The first one is about the acquisition, which is acquire. The second one is about development. And the third one about retain, how to retain the employees. So this is the main three pillars. Under each pillar, there are a lot many activities and process or strategy that we need to follow 
to make sure these pillars is working are together. The first one is about acquire. So as we mentioned yesterday also, is the speakers, they mentioned that about the alignment, about the vision, mission, goals, objective of the, of the organization. So the first thing we need to have the manpower planning. So manpower planning, normally the HR department, they do it before the beginning of the year to make sure how many resources that we need for the next year. But here it is not about the quantity. It is not about how many resources we need. It's about how many energy that we need, how many the power that we need, how many the value that we need to acquire them from the market to help me as organization to achieve the organization objective and goals. So manpower planning, it is required to know exactly what I need from according to the align it with HR vision, mission objective. So as you know, it is cascade down. The organization vision uh, cascade down for each department objective from the organization, from the department objective to the team specific team from the team for each individual. So me, I, I am, uh, um, so me as employee, according to my projects, uh, objective, what I am achieving, this will drive to achieve the organization objective at the end. So I need from now to know the manpower planning is very important. According to my task and responsibility, what I am doing, it should be there is certain competency and tasks. There are some certain competency and tasks to able to achieve this task, this is my responsibility. So based on that, this is very important to have the acquisition. If I don't have the base about what I am looking for to acquire new talent from the market, this will be a disaster. So this is the first thing about is to have the manpower source of your planning is should be linked with your alignment with organization objective. So the acquisition, so start from here is to sourcing and recruitment advertisement. So normally we see that if you see any advertisement in the, or announcement in the market about the job, they see we need, for example, this position title, for example, contract engineer or training specialist. And this is the and uh, job and responsibility that you are looking from this position. But also as well, we need to know about what the skills and competency that uh, we need require the employee. So most of the company, or organization, they have contract engineer. And they have, in concept, they are working with the same task and responsibility. But in fact, according to me as a company, according to the expectations and direction, what I am based on the organization culture, based on the organization cultures, they are looking for certain skills from the market to, to, to come to my company. So sometimes maybe you have in the other company, there are some, uh, for example, the high level employee in the level one, maybe you'll not select this employee to my, uh, my company because not meeting my culture. But maybe from the different company, maybe he's in level three, I can acquire him because he's meeting my expectation according to my culture. What I'm looking for, certain competency to achieve this task, to drive it to achieve the organization objective. So the way of advertisement, it should be different now. It is not about to bring about the task is about the competency skills. Also to attract selection process. So normally most of company they are doing uh, in the, during selection process in the interview. Uh, so we need to different, we need to have gaming with employees. I know some of the company, the HR manager, he sit with employee, they have gaming together. They download game in the, in the phone, they play together in that gaming. After that he select or reject him because he would like to see how this employee he think is not about how he about the task responsibility, I am as a company, I will teach him because he have a mentor, he have a manager, supervisor, he can teach him how to work. But I need to know what kind of skills that I am looking for to select this employee. And also the onboarding. Onboarding when he come to join to the company the first day, I need to know the onboarding should be comprehensive is this is like agreement. It is similar between the contractor and between the, the, any man when they would like to uh, build a house, this like agreement in the first day. We need to tell him this is the expectation from you. 
This is as agreement between me and between. I'm not mean the agreement, the contract. I mean the direction, uh, the expectation that I am looking from this employee. So this is about the first one about the acquisition. The second one is about development. But before we reach, it's like a journey. Now the journey will start. Before we reach to the development, it should be there is an activate learning assessment. So for example, he coming in the contract uh, in the supply chain. supply chain. But now my example is all in contract engineer. He <laughs> coming to the supply chain as a contract engineer. I need to bring the most expert, the specialized meta expert in this area to have assessment for this employee. So he should be there is a comprehensive assessment according to the task responsibility, according to the, what I'm looking for from the competency to have comprehensive assessment for this new joiner. So from then, I know what are the weaknesses, what are the strengths from this employee and what I need to improve and develop this guy. So now I have a clear plan for this new joiners, what I need to look and focus to develop and improve him. So after it activate the learning assessment, and now I know what are the gap of these employees to direct him for the next position. So I need the development part. Development part, it, is, it should be a line for any training or learning and development department should be their strategy aligned with the organization alignment. And by the way, it should be the HR is not, uh, uh, should be proactive, not action, reactive. Should be proactive. They should lead and direct the business to lead the business. So align learning and development with organizational goals. So here, mainly about the training cycle. A training cycle in the development starting with uh, knowing the training requirements which is to identify the training needs. And this is by using the competency development plan. Based on that, we identify individual development plan based to should be linked with the assessment that had been done with the, meter, uh, with the uh, expert in that department. Based on that gap, I know what are the individual development plan for this employee for the next three to five years. So, but it should be there is yearly assessment to make sure he is progressing from one level to another. So after that, from structure competency development plan, we need to have the enhanced different learning solution. In all the school, we know that if somebody, they have a gap, tell him, okay, you need to attend training course in class. No, it should be there is different learning solution. We need to activate them. So there is coaching, there is mentoring, there is rotation on job training, assign for them, give them project assignment. It's not just to send them to a class or, or maybe online. During pandemic, we learned there is some variety of learning solution that we can use it. <clears throat> and here when you talk about learning development or activate learning solutions, this is like a clinic concept. You need to investigate more what they need exactly. So based on that, when you go to the doctor, you need to investigate what is your pain, what is the issue to give you the right medicine. And the last one from the development is about training quality measurement, which is retain on investment. How we can link ROI, retain on investment, how we can use it in the training department. So training is, courses is expensive for the company or for the, any organizations because, because we invest in, be, in the employee to attend the courses. How we can measure that? We need to apply ROI, starting with uh, knowing what are the feedback about it, the knowledge uh, system to having assessment pre and post in the courses. Also, we need to have assessment to asking the here or his direct supervisor about if he start apply what he learned. Because he attending the course, we need to see the impact from that. Do he apply what he learned or not? So based on that, if he really apply what he learned, we see the impact, which is in level four. And then we can calculate in monetary base. Alhamdulillah, I managed to, I have certified in ROI uh, from the Jack Phillips. I did work in one of the leadership project. And really, it comes at the end, we see the value and the profit from this project. Between development, after development, we go to retain. 
But before that, there is a station here, which is performance management. So what's happening now, and I'm sure that there is no link between development and performance management. So you cannot see, maybe the company, some of the organization, they use it, but they miss it in some parts. So what are the performance management? Performance management based on the first assessment that you do, because in the first assessment, you assess them technically and personally. I need to see based on that assessment, do he achieve and he develop and improve himself based on that assessment or not? So it should be linked. So I need to see the performance, his performance based on that task and responsibility that I assign to him. So based on performance management, now to move to the part of retention. I understand that some of the organization, they are not profit organization. They cannot promote yearly or they cannot give bonus or benefit for the employees. But if this happening and if you are in any organization, they have profit, it should be they have promotion for them. You need to link promotion with performance management. You need to link promotion, uh, also rewards, bonus, pay performance management. This is a motivation tool that you can use it for employees. If not, there is some non-monetary benefit. For example, give them uh, have flexible time, give them free days, uh, give them, uh, for example, health, and a lot of uh, ideas that we can use it to promote the employees. Other thing also, if they not get promoted, but at least give him uh, more to delegate him for high level task or responsibility. For example, in the government sector, maybe the promotion comes according to the, uh, 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 the practice after four years. So after four years or five years, till you get the promotion, the, the, the public sector, but at least from one year to another, give him more task. Feel him, he is based on his performance he has the more eligibility to work in higher tasks more than his colleagues. So this is one of the benefits, to encourage him, give him more delegations, and involve him in more higher tasks. And succession planning. So succession planning, by the way, it is not about, it's not about leaders. We need to have for the non-leaders, which is the technical uh, uh, path. So, According to the assessment, it should be drive you to know the employees who should be a leader or should be as a technical expert in the, in the company. So the succession planning should be have two ways. So we need to see the employees who really have leadership potential to be a leaders one day, even if they are not promote them as leaders, but you have a skill pool of leaders. Build skill pool of leaders in your company, they are ready to be a leaders in one day. So if, even if there's no promotion yearly, they will not get a leaders, but they are ready to be a leaders. And also the technical expert, because they will help you to support you to do training courses for the employees, support them, and also will guide them. Okay. Give me two minutes. <laughs> okay, so by then, you have the integration system of the talent management model. By the way, by the way, I'm not encouraged to use talent management model if you don't have system. And this Mr. Abdel Basat, he mentioned that. HR is about technology. If you not invest in technology, you cannot achieve this one. Talent management model, it is not easy model to use it if you don't have system. So it should be have systematic from starting from the first assessment till he go to the career path. To show the clear career path, it should be have a system because each process should be uh, integrated with other process by default automatically till you know the, uh, the uh, comprehensive uh, results for each individual. So there are some practices applying in uh, talent management model in uh, Google. They apply it. Uh, Microsoft, uh, Southwest uh, uh, Airlines, and also the IBM. I read about them, and I have links there you can read about the using practice, uh, b b b practicing of talent management model in this company. And uh, we can see the profit they achieve it in yearly basis. How they were and how they come because of utilizing and practicing talent management model. So this talent management the key points. Uh, we have the Webster says that 
Today, talent management has become high priority for many companies because organizations are under pressure to cut costs while increasing productivity. So you need to have a talent, a power, a value. While you're cutting costs, you don't have more employees, you need to more have more productivity. So by have a value and talent employees. So this is example, if we have it in, uh, in the football player. We have one player, he achieved a lot of things. Maybe his cost maybe is very high, but what he is doing according to the benefit because of his talent, he's achieving more. And also in today's, uh, this is repeating to the first one. Uh, also about the infrastructure. Infrastructure of the, some organization, uh, of the organization because of, they are not set, and this is, we have example in public sector mainly. So this requires for the change management. So how we can apply the change management to make sure the talent management practice applying in this sector. And the last one is about how to develop the average employees. So yesterday we mentioned that. I think they mentioned that there in the panel. They, they are focusing for the top, for the top talent. But also we need to consider about the average talent, how we can improve, develop them. We need to be equal with each individual to make sure they are adding value for the organization. So this is some sources that I bring uh, from, from them for, for this research. So that all from my side, and thank you for your, for your listening, and all the best. Salah uh, Shaibi from Middle East College. My question is either to uh, Mr. Suleiman or Mr. Abdul Basad. It's regarding the talent management related matter, and the acquirement. If, for example, you're recruiting somebody, uh, and this person is supposed to be uh, required to be very highly skillful. You recruit it, you interview him, he's gone through the whole process, he's very professional, all your criteria, what you ask for, all the system, he's perfect. He's the person you wanted. The only gap that we're always facing in this kind of thing is whether this person has char the charisma or he's very active in working. Because sometimes he's very skillful, very experienced, but when, when it comes to work, he doesn't perform, he doesn't work. So what do you need from a person who's highly, um, you know, he's uh, knowledgeable, um, he has um, his whatever, or requirement is there. But how would I judge, or how would I know whether this person will be very active and working? Because it's not only about the skills itself, it's about the human who's working with you. His attitude. And at this time, uh, we find it always a gap and very difficult to uh, always choose the right person when it comes. But because you all talk about the skills, um, uh, experience, all of these kind of things. But sometimes, even if a person who uh, have all of this, sometimes he's not willing to work. He's lazy or whatever, and he's not performing and not giving you the target you want. So how would you really distinguish and know this. Okay, first of all, thank you for the uh, question. Um, in fact, as you mentioned uh, at the beginning of my presentations, so the main thing about each employee is about the skills. So each employee, they have certain competency, skills. So from the first assessment that you apply for each employee, you know the strength and the weaknesses and what, what the area that we need to improve and develop. So when he come active, that means at the first, normally for any employee they come to join the company, they have more enthusiastic to change, to improve, to develop. So that based on the culture of the environment, if they have a good mentor, and also they have a project that he can work on, will be more active to work on it. But also we need to make sure the project that he will work on it, there is an outcome and results and KPI that can be measured for this individual to be more motivated to work on something he can show it in place. So if he has certain skills and the strength, we need to employ to work on these certain skills. 
Maybe you are, he is, uh, has uh, some project work in a project, but this project maybe is not eligible to do it because, because his t skills or competency are unable to do that. You need to drive him to work on something he is interested in to be able to achieve and drive this objective or these goals of his task. Thank you, Suleiman.